Howdy everyone, Tricobo, Steve Green here with my new hairdo. Anyway, today I thought I would talk about bump steer. Bump steer is a phenomenon on recumbent trikes that a you hit a bump or an irregularity in the road that it momentarily takes the steering out of your control or directs the steering somehow differently than what you want. And it, it moves the front wheels left and right now most of the time it's no big deal <clears throat> um, as far as whether it's safe or unsafe I would say you don't even think about it <clears throat> on, on trikes on recumbent trikes um, it, it actually doesn't come to your your, your mind at all until <laughs> the day that it almost causes you to crash and hurt or kill yourself, you know. Then you start thinking about this bump steer thing. I mean, you read about it and you hear about it a lot online and the forums and everything. Bump steer, everybody's throwing bump steer around. Um, but it can be, so it just, you know, you, hit, you know what it's like when you hit a bump and your wheels kind of get jarred a little bit left or right, but you just keep on going. It doesn't get dangerous until you're going down a steep mountain pass at a high rate of speed and you're, you know, you're on the, you're not usually, when you're going down mountain passes, whether it's on a tour like I've done or just having fun, you know, in the mountains, there's a lot of mountains where I live, you're usually out in the lane. Yeah. When you ride normally in traffic or on a lot of roads, you're riding on the shoulder or close to the edge of the road. But when you're going, you know, 30, 40, 50 plus miles an hour, I don't, personally, I don't like to be that close to the side of the road, so I move out. And so, of course, you know, you always have to take traffic, what's coming behind you, into account. Two, when you move out into that lane. A lot of times on uh, steep mountain uh, descents, there's more than one lane going down, so you can take the whole lane. Uh, but even if there's only one lane, you still want to move out. You don't want to be real close to the edge. The closer you are to the edge, the less margin for error you have when you're going 40 or 50 or 55 miles an hour. <clears throat> and that's when bump steer can present a hazard to your health and longevity. <clears throat> So, um, bump steer really came to my mind in a very dramatic way when I was touring on my Cat Trike 700 north of Manzanita, the little town of Manzanita on the north or northern Oregon coast. And I was there's a big, long, steep hill there. And there are many of those on the uh, coast uh, highway one and 101 route. So I'm flying down this thing on the Cat Trike 700, having a blast, <laughs> and something in the road takes, it does cause this bump steer phenomenon, and my my wheels were uh, moved considerably, and I never had that happen before. Touring on my Ice Trike, uh, I just hadn't had that happen. I mean, you can feel the irregularities. Uh, and, and the bump steer wanting to happen, but you can control it. I was able to control it on that 700, <clears throat> but it moved enough to where it scared the living daylights out of me. It, I mean, I was close to the edge. It's forests and trees there, but it's a steep drop off. And had I gone over the edge, you know, I would have run into trees or <laughs> something. Um, because there, there was no guardrail, 
and I obviously would have been hurt on a tricycle. There's no, not a whole lot of protection. And when you're going, I was probably going around 50, I think, on that run. And uh, that speed on a tricycle, you definitely get hurt or you could be killed. And so it really got my attention. And that's when I learned that bump steer can be dangerous depending on how you use your tricycle. Most of the time on flat ground and, and regional or day rides, you know, you're, you're not uh, going crazy fast, but there are times you get going crazy fast. If you do go over any mountain passes, and you know, I, I have a number of times, and it's a thrill, there's no doubt about it, but you have to keep this in mind. Now, the reason I had never been bothered by bump steer on my ice trike, because, is because that it has what's called indirect steering. Indirect steering, you move your handlebars, sorry, <laughs> you move your handlebars forward and backwards, your hand grips. When you, when you move forward with the right hand, you go to the left. When you pull the left hand back, you go to the left. When you pull the right hand back, you go to the right. It, the handlebar is, a, is a, uh, an attached solid thing that mounts underneath your seat and it pivots on a pivot point and there are two arms that come out that actually do the steering, all right? And so that's how that works. And the reason you can control it without any worry on indirect steering is because your hands actually move forward and fore and aft to steer your tricycle. And that is controlled by powerful muscles, your chest, your back, your shoulders, and all. And plus you can, when you're going that fast, you lock your arms into your side or against your seat and your ear, no, you're holding on. And so you get, obviously you get vibration in the road and there's movement, but there's nothing that can actually wrench control from you and send you over the edge. So that's not going to happen on indirect steering. That's what I have on this Scorpion also. Now, the reason that the, the cap track incident got my attention, <clears throat> um, and it was pretty frightening, <clears throat> is because it had direct steering. Direct steering um, is not as expensive to engineer or to produce. It, um, it with the direct steering, the uh, you have two separate uh, handlebars. One comes out of the kingpin on each side of your trike. It comes up like this, and so you move your hands like this, kind of in an arc to turn. You don't have those powerful fore and aft muscles that can that you can lock in and uh, eliminate any uh, factor of not being safe with the bump steer. <laughs> Your hand, it's like this, okay? Now you can't really lock that in. You can hold your elbows to your side, but this is rotator cuff, just the shoulders, rotator cuff only, that do this. And when you get something like these, this bump steer thing, when it happened to me on the on my cat trike on that Manzanita Hill, I didn't see some big bump or pothole or something coming. I don't even know what it was. Whatever I hit, it just boom, you know, and wow. And it, <laughs> I'm sure I turned pale. Um, <clears throat> so it's not something you can really guard against that much, except watch the road carefully ahead of you. And if you see something, take it seriously if you have direct steering, which is this kind of thing, which is what cat trikes have, um, and terror trikes and performer trikes, I believe. Um, so, yeah. Bump steer is something that's talked a lot about, and I don't know, I haven't seen any talks about potential dangers of bump steer, but it can be dangerous at high rates of speed. Um, I mean, if you're going at a high rate of speed on a flat ground, and you have that happen to you, okay, obviously immediately you stop pedaling and you start slowing down, okay? Flat ground, no big deal. If you're flying along on a, 
on an ICE VTX or a Cat Track 700 and you're going really fast on the flat and you, and you hit something that, uh, well, it'd be a Cat Track 700 if you, if you, because that's, that's uh, di direct steering. So if you hit something on a flat on the Cat Track 700, um, at, say you're going 30 miles an hour from just sheer power of that trike, then it's not as critical because once you stop pedaling, if something like that does happen, which is unlikely, I never had it happen on my Cat Trike 700 on flat ground, even when I was hitting 30 miles an hour at times. So it's not that big of a deal. The, the problem comes in when you're going downhill, because when you're going down these steep uh, descents in the mountains, you have momentum. And that's what's carrying you down because you're not even pedaling. You're you, all you're doing is coasting, you know. And so, basically, what can you do if you if you are able to keep control of the trike, even though it scares you initially, like really bad, you can put on the brakes and slow down, <clears throat> which I started to do on that Manzanita hill. But I <laughs> I thought ah. That's my glitch for this hill, and I let her continue to rip, and I went all the way to the bottom. And it didn't happen again. I've only had one time in, uh, you know, riding recumbent trikes since uh, 2009 when I started that this has popped up to where I got really, really scared. <laughs> and if it happens to you, you'll know what I'm talking about. You know, if you have uh, direct steering, go find some steep hill, and a uh, long hill where you pick up uh, you know, 50 miles an hour or better, and, and uh, I, I would not recommend attempting fate. Now, <clears throat> something I want to address that I hadn't thought of until recently is there's a lot of trikers nowadays. I mean, it's a very popular thing to do is be putting electric motors on these things. You can get these Scorpions with a, with electric uh, drive assist motors, and there's one option where you can uh, go like get it up to 28 miles an hour. And so I, I can't really speak to that because I've never ridden an electrified tricycle. But if you are going under electric power at a rate of speed that you normally could only attain going down a long steep hill on a human powered trike, could you get in trouble? Perhaps, perhaps, you know, I mean, it all depends on the circumstances, but, uh, I would say, you know, if you have indirect steering like what I have on this HP or I had on my ice strikes, you can lock in and if it's, if it's getting to this, you know, when you start hitting over 40 miles an hour, it starts getting your attention like, okay, this is serious, I can't be daydreaming left and right. Because yeah, 40 miles an hour on a trike is kind of like a sports car, you know, and over 50 miles an hour, yeah, it really gets your attention, but you can lock in. And you can hit the bumps and uh, uh, it'll jerk you. But on the direct steering, for those of you who ride direct steering trikes, I like both kinds of steering, but I just want people to be aware that if you ride a direct steering tricycle, um, be aware that that's just your rotator cuffs uh, in your shoulders that are controlling that. And you just don't have the power. You don't have the physical power that you do pushing or pulling. I mean, you can, with, with indirect steering, you can lock in as solid as a rock. But with direct steering, you just can't do that. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, if you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, it's just the rotator cuffs and if you hit a bad bump, boom, it does it like that. And that'll, that'll take your breath away. <laughs> and your life will flash before you. It did for me, I tell you what. I'll never forget that time. But anyway, that's it. Bump steer, yeah, it's out there. 99% <clears throat> of the time, it's no big deal. But that 1%, watch out if uh, you're in any of these circumstances that I've talked about here. All right, folks, see you later.